Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. This is Andrea and in this channel we talk all things ed tech, business, mindset and online teaching or teaching in general for language teachers. So if you're a language teacher and any of those topics interest you, then consider subscribing. So in today's video, I'm going to be addressing some of the reasons why I had decided to stop working um, in a certain place. And uh, I mean, yeah, so just like talk a little bit about my experience quitting and uh, some of the things that I had to take into consideration the, I mean, uh, before deciding to stop working at a certain place and what uh, basically the reasons why <laughs> um, I thought that it was no longer worth my time. Um, yeah, so if any of these things resonate with you, then please let me know in the comments. You can also um, uh, get in touch with me via my Instagram. I'm gonna leave. The, uh, I'm going to leave my Instagram in the co in the description box. If you want to go follow me there, then go follow me there. Um, but yeah, so that's some of the that's what I wanted to talk about today. Like some of the reasons why uh, I believe that working for a company or like even not like not choosing because there were times that I said yes and then I said no. Uh, on the same day, like in the morning, I would be like, yes, I'm going to work for you. And then in the evening, I was like, no, I'm not. So yeah, some of the reasons why I decided not to work at certain places uh, or not to work anymore at certain places. Uh, remember that if you like this video, then uh, please um, click the like button. And again, like if any of these things resonate with you, then please uh, leave a comment down below if you feel... Um, to do so. <laughs> so, uh, I'm not, I probably, I'll probably not edit this uh, because I want this, I want this to be like kind of like a rough sort of video. Like, I don't know if you get my mouth. Like, um, it's like, I don't want to censor things, uh, but I will be careful. I mean, regarding what I say because I don't want to give names, of course. But um, yeah, so. Uh, Let's begin. So I think that the first time I said no after saying yes to a place, um, like to an academy, was because there were like major red flags that I had overlooked because I was really desperate for a job. Um, some of the reasons were the fact that it would have taken me like two hours to get to uh, that specific location and two hours back um, the shifts were gonna be long um, and that would meant that I would be getting home by 11 p.m. Um, and that's just like two hours bus ride and that would not that was not taking into consideration the fact that I was not gonna I was we, we, we know in Argentina we'll call it, we, we call this like in Blanco, so I would have to be, I would have to be working for them as a freelancer, which meant that I was going to have to pay um, for like, social security and all of that, um, and my taxes and everything. So, and uh, that traveling time was not paid, um, and uh, not even the bus fare. So I was expected to go to work and then come back. And that was like all on me, even though I lived very far away from it. Um, so that was like the first major red flag, but again, I was like really desperate for <laughs> a job at that point. I was like, gonna, I was gonna say yes to it, basically like anything that came my way as long as I was available and as long as I knew how to get to a certain place. And even like, take, I mean, taking into account the fact that I took, that it took me actually like one hour, one hour and a half to get to this place. And it was not even during like rush hour. Um, so yeah, that was like one of the biggest red flags. Uh, the fact that first of all, I was gonna have to work for them as a freelancer. They would not even pay for my traveling time nor my like transportation. Um, so yeah, that was like a big, like a major red flag. Another reason why I decided that was this is the same place. There are like two, two reasons, uh, two more reasons. So the second one was basically when I had an interview. Um, and this, I knew this was a red flag, but like younger me, I was like 20, 22, 
20, yeah, 22 and I had just moved to that city so I was really desperate like I really needed a job I really needed to stop working not because I was in need like it was not that I needed the money per se because I needed like to pay a rent or to buy food like those things were covered but I really wanted to do that I really wanted to get a job because that was the main reason why I decided to move to that place um, to that city in the first place to get a job um, but yeah, like the second, the, the second red flag for me was when I was talking to the person who, in, who was interviewing me, who was the, um, uh, the academy's owner. Um, it was basically an academy that uh, had, um, like, they would teach everything basically, and one of those things was English. Uh, they would teach like chemistry, physics, uh, mathematics, geography, and all of that. And then they would also teach English. So the second, the second, and I, I think that this is like a major red flag because uh, he told me that he wanted to test my English, which I mean, I don't disagree with that. I mean, if you are a language teacher, it's highly likely that you're getting the interview simply because, I mean, they have already looked at your resume. They know if you are a good fit for the job or not. So when you are in, the, when, you, when you have the interview, it may be, uh, a matter of like knowing if you would like fit in the work culture or to test your English level that or oh, your Spanish level or German level whatever so that's basically in my opinion that's one of the reasons why they would like to interview you um so one of but the thing is like I did not I did not mind that however this was the the red flag that I think uh I don't know, it was, it was like a huge red flag because he told me that he wanted to test my English and I was like, okay, and I just assumed that he was an English teacher as well or that he had some, I mean, he had something, I don't know, like a degree related to probably like English, English and languages, probably linguistics, I don't know, philology. And, <laughs> and then I found out that it was not because he was like, uh, he was an English teacher or any sort of uh, or he, I mean, he, don't, he didn't have, he didn't even have a degree related to languages. Um, it was because he had lived in the U.S. for 10 years, so that's why he wanted to test my English. And I was like, well, um, you could have been living in the U.S. And spe um, s all the time, like, you could, you could have just spoken Spanish the whole time. So, like, what? Anyways, um, so yeah, so I started answering his questions and uh, that was like major red flag. But again, I was like, okay, I need this job. Probably it's not red, it's green or orange. I don't know. And suddenly it was colorblind, colorblind. But anyways, so that was the second major red flag. And then the third major red flag for me was when we were choosing the books that, I mean, we're, not, not when we were choosing because we were supposed to have a meeting and uh, the teachers were supposed to choose the book but the fact was that i was the only teacher in the team the other two uh, the other two teachers were not they were still in, they were like trainees they were not uh they hadn't graduated yet so but yeah like they have been teaching for quite a while so they had experience but the fact was it was not a meeting for us to pick a book, it was basically a meeting for the school owner to justify why he had picked some books. Like he had already done it and he was just like giving us explanation as to why. And uh, for me, it, the second, well that was like a big major red flag, like why, why would you tell, why would you tell us to go to a meeting? to find out like, okay, let's discuss what book we're gonna use and then uh, not asking us and just telling us what we're gonna do. Like, okay, just said that, just say that and that's fine, but he didn't. Anyways, so the school owner uh, then uh, proceeded to tell us like some of the reasons why and one of the reasons was the fact that Someone from Cambridge, uh, it was someone from Cambridge, like, you know, like the people, the sales team, they usually recommend books to academies and that's how they sell their books. Like nothing against Cambridge, okay, if you want to sponsor me sometime, I will be really happy. Uh, however, 
uh, someone from Cambridge recommended that book. And I was like, that is not a book for a six-year-old. It was, the texts were too long. Uh, the um, First of all, the texts were too long. But let's just start right there. For a six-year-old who's just starting out, that's not okay. Uh, then the second thing was that he was, um, the texts were too long. They, they overall, like the book, the style of the book was not made for like kids that age. Probably kids age 11 or 12 because that's, I mean, I know that kids who are that age are using those books. Like I know that right now, but at that time I didn't, but it was really obvious that there was not, this was not a book for a six-year-old or seven-year-old because I had used books similar, uh, similar to those when I was studying and when, when I was studying English at a language academy and when I was teaching, um, when I was teaching at a previous, uh, at a previous school in a different city. And he was like, so, I mean, I told him like, I don't agree with this. I think that these are not appropriate for um, kids that age who are just starting out. Uh, they shouldn't have that many uh, texts. The words, like the, the, the words were really like small. Usually with kids that age, they usually, they tend to be big um, or at least bigger than that one. And uh, he was like, his only justification was like, oh no, but someone from Cambridge recommended it to me. And I was like, Mm, okay, just, I mean, you do you, boo, but yeah, anyway, that's when I decided, that was like, the, that was the last thing um, that made me, like, realize that, okay, yeah, this is not gonna work, uh, so then I messaged him and I told him that I was not gonna get the job, first of all, like, first of all, if I have to be honest, it was basically because of the bus ride, like, two hours bus ride to go, two hour uh, bus, bus ride to come back home would meant that I had four hours um, that I did I would not have four hours during my day to take on more work elsewhere so to get more work anyways uh, so yeah uh, that was also yeah first of all not paying for a bus ride not paying traveling time, asking teachers to be freelancers, like up on top of that, asking teachers to be freelancers. Uh, a, trying to uh, check my English level, but not being a teacher himself and just doing it because he had lived in the US for quite a long time. Like I have lived in Russia and I don't speak Russian. I am living in Italy and I don't speak Italian. Why would I check someone's Italian level? Italian level. So anyway, yeah. And then the last thing was that with the books, like uh, if you're not gonna take into account what we are saying as teachers, then there's no room for me here. Like I do not want to be a robot. I mean, at that time, I did not want to be like a kind of robot. I wanted my opinion to be taken into account or at least make it seem as if you were taking my opinion into account. But yeah, that's another, like, that's a whole, that's a, that's a whole video on its own. Anyways, um, the, another reason why I decided to quit, which is basically, I think that somebody, um, that we should all do it at some point. Um, so I was working in a place, um, I was working at a place and uh, it, I think it, it, it was like, I was there for like two months and then I decided to just go and send my CV to a different place uh, to just like no uh, it was just like for fun I was bored so I was like okay I'm, let me send this CV let's see what let's see what happens let's see what happens yeah, what happened was that I ended up being hired and I was like, okay, so now I gotta choose like what are the advantages and the disadvantages of working at this place? What are the advantages and disadvantages of working at that place? Well, one of the major advantages was basically that the place at where I was was paying me more. But the place where the, the place which hired me, um, like after that, uh, the, they hired me when I sent my CV because I was bored, uh, they had like more of like a name. 
like it was widely recognized it, it was recognized it was it was a really well-known place and not only in that city but like it was part of I, I wouldn't dare say like part of a franchise but probably um, anyway so uh, yeah that's basically why I decided to work there simply because it would look good on my CV um, so that's also another reason why I think that like many people could I mean uh, that was one of the reasons why I quit like deciding that I mean working like working at that place was awesome at that first place it was the first place who gave me a job but I wanted to like sort of scale and um, I ended up choosing the other one uh, but yeah but then <laughs> Another reason why I have decided to start working at a place was basically because I knew that there was no way uh, for a young teacher like me to sort of make my way to like higher levels or to like a different place. For example, like not, not being in charge of just the teaching part, but also like admin stuff. Because I, I like admin. Um, no, more often than not, I, I do like it. Uh, when it comes to teacher training, teacher development, and all that stuff. Um, so anyways, uh, and these real, I had this realization because I was talking to one of the teachers at the second place that I was working. And I still remember that conversation. Uh, and this happened like five years ago. Pro yeah, five years ago. Um, and she told me that she had been working there for more than 10 years. She had, she had had like the same group for over th three years now. And then when she asked uh, like a different group, I mean, for a change, uh, she was told no, because that would not go, I mean, that, that level would not, suit her personality or like or like her personality would not would not suit with that specific level and i was like what so if she who had been working there for more than 10 years cannot get a simple change because it was not like okay i'm, I'm teaching beginners i want advanced i want proficiency okay maybe i get it maybe maybe i get it but it was like from from beginner to elementary. It was not like a big change. And she was told no. She had been working there for 10 years. So I was like, <laughs> I have no future here. Like I have no future here. So that was another like major red flag. Like talking to teachers and realizing that they had been doing that same thing for years. And then once they had, once they asked for like something, like a change, like a different group, probably different times. I mean, timetable, I don't know. They were told no. And I was there, I was there uh, for like two months. Uh, sorry, two or three months. And I was like, if that's what they say to you, then what are they going to say to me? Because I wanted the same thing as her. I wanted higher levels. So like, um... <clears throat> okay, so I um, should reconsider this. And uh, well, uh, it's already been like 18 minutes. Uh, if you stayed up until like this part of the video, I know you are very nosy, but you are my people. Like I am like that too, and I appreciate you. So if you have listened to all of this around so far, make sure to subscribe to this channel and like this video and follow me on Instagram if you would like to see more like daily updates um, of me. Anyways, um, I think that the, la uh, the last reason that I would like to mention, or like things that made me realize that I want I wanted to stop working at the place was. Um, basically that there was no flexibility like absolutely no flexibility uh i remember that there was this uh, i think it was like a conference a teacher conference and uh, the topic of the conference was neuroscience and at the time i was really really into ne neuroscience and uh, like neuro psych uh, neuro education and all of that and there was a conference happening in my hometown, which is very strange. Like, because I don't live in a big, I didn't, 
um, live in a big city. So that was like really strange. So we was like, I don't, I don't want to say that it was like one in a lifetime opportunity, but it was going to be cheaper. Like I wouldn't have to travel to a different state or travel to a different country in order to attend. Uh, it was just going to be like a 30 minute bus ride. And I asked my employer, I mean my director, if I could please um, go to that uh, conference and then make up for my one hour because that's the, the thing the conference was like on a Friday and I only worked for one hour uh, on that Friday and I asked her if I could make up for that time probably like uh, 15 minutes on Monday, 15 minutes on Tuesday, 15 minutes on Wednesday, 15 minutes on Thursday doing like admin stuff because I was not I did not have groups. I was just uh, Like helping teachers out. So I told her I asked her if I could just Go to the conference and then make up for it uh, by working like over time uh, On Monday Tuesday Wednesday and Thursday and she said no because that's not something that they do and uh, Yeah, basically that so I was like, okay so this is not gonna work because I expect uh, I was I think that I was not probably if I had to teach that I wouldn't even ask but the fact that I only had one hour and it was basically probably correcting stuff or cutting things or printing things for teachers which is basically something that I could have done like on a different day at a different time that was not it was not that urgent uh, that was really was bothersome. I don't think it was a matter of me being able to do it But more of a way of asserting power um, Which again, it's like okay some people are okay with it I was not okay with it or probably it's because I wasn't um, because I am an Aquarius. I don't know Anyways, that was another reason why I decided to like, okay, this may not be the best place. Like, I am asking you to do me this one favor and I'm not telling you like, okay, um, just give me that day off and I'm not going to work. Like, I was going to compensate it uh, by doing something else. Uh, and it was not because it was like, okay, I want to go to a party. No, it was because I wanted to attend a conference. But then by the end, like, I could have sent, I don't know, like an email with a summary or presented like three ideas to the rest of the teachers that I, I mean, that I drawn from the conference. Anyways, uh, they told me no, so I was like, okay, this may not be one of the best places to grow or to do what I want to do, which was to not only work for a place and learn from it, but also uh, allow me the possibility of attending conferences of uh, being of like continuing my professional development not but, like in different places not only in that specific place and whatever you choose to um train us on basically so i wanted to do a bit more and yeah so that's basically another reason why i decided to quit uh, i have like many reasons why so i might make a part two anyway let me know in the comments if you'd like me to share a bit more about my experience quitting and the, some of the things that i've been through that uh, made me realize okay this may not be the right place for me anyways i might make this a series because i like to run and if this is gonna help you um make up your mind as to whether or not you'd like to stay in a place or not or if you're in the same position right now just in my same position like when i was <laughs> in that position um if you'd like to know more about that then of course you can just comment or if you like more privacy then just message me on instagram i like to talk to people so um yeah so let me know if you'd like to know more about that and i'll see you in the next video bye bye